Good morning and welcome to this Friday of the second week of Easter. I'm so glad you could join me. So today we're going to begin a reflection on the Gospel of John, chapter 6. Sometimes this is called the Bread of Life Discourse. But we're going to begin with the very first verse, and I just want to highlight a few things in the passages we are given uh, today for the Mass. So I want to first begin by reading the first few lines. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee, and a large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. In what or in whom is our faith anchored? In what or in whom is our faith anchored? It says here that the people were following Jesus because of the signs he was performing on the sick. There's a moment in our Christian life, and it happens for all of us. Many of the writers on the interior life in our Catholic tradition speak about this. It's a moment of purification with regard to our faith. Is our faith anchored more in what God gives, or is it anchored more in God? Do I love God because of what He does for me, because of the gifts that He gives me, or do I love God for His own sake? And many times this can be hidden from us. There can be this area of self-love, as some of the writers on the interior life speak about. There's this self-love where we can become, without knowing it, attached to the gifts of God rather than to God. And so we see throughout this Gospel of John, in fact, the very purpose of this Gospel, which John gives us in chapter 20, is this Gospel and everything that John writes He's writing it to lead us to faith. In the biblical sense, faith is a relationship. And in fact, the reason for the commandments and for the other teachings in the scriptures is to help form a right relationship with God, with the Father, with the Son, with the Holy Spirit, and also a right relationship with our neighbor. So here we see that the crowd does not yet have the faith that Jesus desires. And maybe you and I need God to purify our faith in order to anchor it more in God than in the gifts of God. Then it says, when Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because Jesus himself knew what he was going to do. This notion of testing, this is very important for us to be able to look at our life from the biblical perspective, something I mentioned yesterday, to look at it through the lens of faith and to see it as God sees it. This time that we are in is a time of testing. And to be able to receive it as such which means that God has allowed this because he wants to work on something within our hearts. He wants to 
bless an area of our life by graces of conversion, of transformation, of spiritual growth and greater maturity. This is why life for us is often a test. And a test sometimes first reveals what is weak, what is imperfect, what still falls short of the goal. And this is the painful part of a test because it exposes precisely the area where God wants to work, where the pruning needs to happen, or as I said, where the purification needs to take place. And when Jesus asked the question to Philip, what is the reaction? He and the disciples, Philip and the other disciples, they see the large crowd and they have nothing. They find a boy with a few fish and some loaves of barley, uh, barley bread, and they just throw up their hands and they say, but what is this for this crowd? It is impossible. And so we see here that Jesus is testing them to see what they would do in this situation. Now, he allows them to feel their powerlessness. He allows them to feel helpless before this situation. As we often feel, sometimes before a present situation, or when we think about the future, we think and wonder, how is this going to resolve itself? How is this going to work it? How are things going to work out? And sometimes we too are allowed to feel that we have no control. We feel our inadequacy. We feel our poverty, our weakness. And why does God allow this? Why does God allow things to test us, to make us feel this way? It's because He wants us to turn to Him. He wants us to grow in trust. These disciples are supposed to feel this way. So that they then go to Jesus and say, Jesus, please help us. You provide what we cannot. And Jesus asks them to give them what little they have. So they give him the few fish, the few barley loaves from that little boy. And Jesus multiplies them such that it's able to feed the entire crowd. And through this sign, just as when the people saw Jesus heal the sick, through this sign of multiplication, to come to believe who Jesus is, that He is the Christ, the Son of God, and therefore not to worry. But whenever we are feeling overwhelmed, when we are feeling stretched, when we are afraid, when we do not know what to do, we are to turn to Jesus and to anchor our faith in the very person of Christ. And He will provide what we need in these times of trial. And in, and in providing our trust will grow. Our faith will deepen. And Jesus will be able to manifest his love, his care for us, how he wants to provide for us. But he wants us to trust him and to put our faith in him. So, I hope this was helpful. God bless you, and I'll see you again tomorrow.